Up until very recent times, one of the most dangerous things that a woman could do in her life was get pregnant. While pregnancy was something to be celebrated because of the potential new life, the complications were something to be feared. This was no different in ancient China. The Chinese had plenty of traditions and superstitions that they believed would make pregnancy and labor both for mom and baby. Welcome to Crazy Histories, where we bring you the craziest and weirdest facts from human history. Some of the things discussed in this video may be offensive or disturbing for some people. Viewer discretion is advised. Ying and Yang The concept of yin and yang is a concept that is not limited to pregnancy, but is interwoven through pretty much all of Chinese philosophy. In simple terms, yin and yang are two opposite forces. For someone to have a good and healthy life, the two must be balanced. Yin represents the feminine, dark, and negative, while yang is the masculine, bright and positive things in life. When someone has too much of one, they need to do things to increase the other. The ancient Chinese believed that pregnancy and childbirth to be a big cause for yin and yang to get unbalanced, making the woman more susceptible to injury and illness during and shortly after pregnancy. They believed that when a woman loses blood during the birth process, that this caused her body to fall more towards yin because it made her colder, so she would have to do things to increase her yang to bring balance back to her body. One way that a woman could do this was eat certain foods that held yang properties. One popular dish that could do this was pork knuckles mixed with ginger and black vinegar. Even in modern times, this superstition holds sway over people. Women can go to extreme measures to try to balance her yin and yang. It isn't unheard of for women to give themselves heat stroke or even cause death by trying to avoid the cold after giving birth. Pregnancy Superstitions The ancient Chinese believed that a pregnant woman should guard her thoughts. This is because they believed that any negative thoughts would get transferred to the baby through the heart. Reading good poetry or beautiful stories was one way that a woman could encourage good thoughts. Gossip, however, was forbidden as they thought it could poison the baby. Something else that was seen as bad for babies in utero was repairing a house that a pregnant woman lived in. All repairs and construction needed to wait until after the birth of the child. They believed that the noises that came along with construction could cause deformities. One thing that the ancient Chinese took very seriously at all times, but especially pregnancy, was the threat of evil spirits. Because of this, pregnant women were forbidden from attending funerals as they didn't want to attract any spirits that may be hanging around. If a family thought there was an evil spirit in their home, they believed that it could be scared off by a woman sleeping with a knife under her bed. If she didn't want to do that, she could hang a piece of paper that was cut to look like scissors from her bed curtains. A tiger skin could also be hung over the bed to protect from the spirits. The ancient Chinese did not understand miscarriages, and when one happened, believed it was because a spirit stole the child. To try to prevent this, parents would not name the children until after they were born. It was bad luck to do so. What if spirits liked the sound of the child's name and wanted it for themselves? Instead, parents would give their children fake names, also called milk names, before they were born to scare the evil spirits. The milk names would often be a fierce animal name or something ugly. This was to trick the spirits into thinking that the child was not worth taking from them. The real name would not be given until well after birth, and sometimes a child could have several names throughout their early life before getting their real one. In Western cultures today, a baby shower is an exciting part of pregnancy for a woman. However, in ancient China, celebrating babies before they were born was considered unlucky. Instead, the party should be held after the birth and the first few months of life. A shower is also how many new parents today are able to provide for their child in the first year of its life. Instead of having the family's community help provide for the baby, the ancient Chinese would have the mother of the pregnant woman provide everything. A month before the expected due date, the grandmother would send a bundle of clothing called su shen. This was seen to encourage birth. Then, three days after birth, the grandmother would visit her grandchild and bring all the rest of the clothes and baby equipment. 
Some other bad things for a pregnant woman were sitting on a crooked mat, looking at clashing colors, losing her temper, or getting angry, and having sex. Of course, we know that these are all perfectly safe things for a pregnant woman to do. The ancient Chinese also thought that if a pregnant woman ate food that wasn't properly cut or mashed, then her child would grow up to have careless tendencies. Another strange belief they held was that if a woman ate light-colored foods, then it would give the baby a lighter complexion. Birth and the Zodiac When it came to actually giving birth, women did not have a lot of options available to them. They, of course, did not have the same types of pain relief that we do today, but they did have ways to ease birthing pains. One of them was a strong herbal tea that a woman would drink during the birth process. Once the child finally entered the world, it was time for the parents to tell their friends and family. To indicate that a child was born, the father would send money and wine to his wife's parents. The wine would be adorned with certain ribbons to indicate whether the child was a boy or a girl. To tell other family and friends, the new parents would send out baskets of red eggs, an even number to signify a girl and an odd number to mean a boy. As we have said several times now, the ancient Chinese were very superstitious. They put quite a bit of stake into when a baby was born. The hour, day, month, and year of birth would all dictate which of the eight characters a child would be born under, and which would rule the child's life. It could determine whether a child would be wealthy, successful, blessed, or not. Wealthier parents might even hire fortune tellers to read their baby's fortune, or even to aid in when to conceive to give their child the most successful life. In addition, the ancient Chinese believed that each person was made up of different amounts of the same five elements – water, fire, earth, wood, and metal. If a child was missing one of these elements in their life, then the parents would make up for it by incorporating that element into their name. However, it was seen as a good thing to not have a lot of fire or water, as a significant amount of either one could mean that the child would be injured or even die from fire or drowning, respectively. The Tenth Month In much of the modern world, pregnancy is seen as lasting for nine months. However, traditionally, the Chinese see it as being ten months. This belief isn't something that stayed in the ancient Chinese world, as the Chinese still say that a woman's gestation period is 10 months long. So where does this extra month come from? Well, it happens after the first nine months and is the first month of the newborn's life. Chinese women participate in an ancient tradition that's called doing the month or sitting in. It's such an old tradition that we have documented evidence of it happening at least as far back as the first century. In ancient times, the sitting-in was much more strict than it is today, and even then, some women took it more seriously than others. It takes place during the first 30 to 40 days after a woman gives birth. During this time, a new mom should not leave her home for anything, allow visitors, or even take a shower. It's a very intense time for a new mother. The new mom will usually be accompanied only by her mother or mother-in-law during this time. And in stricter houses, even the new father would be sent away from the house. The tradition started because they believed that women and babies had low immunity during the first month after birth. Certain foods and drinks were often consumed to encourage the rebalance of yin and yang and to improve the immune system. Other foods were eaten to help shrink the mother's uterus and encourage lactation. Some foods that were considered to be particularly good for mom and baby during this time were red dates, sesame oil, and ginger. Sometimes a woman's stomach would be wrapped and bound during this month. This was to prevent organ prolapses and to encourage the organs to return to their proper places. This was also done for more vain reasons as well. They believed it would improve the waistline. As we said, the strictness of this time varied from house to house, but they all have the same general rules. Women should avoid cold drinks and wind, including fans and air conditioning, because the cold discourages yang. Women should also avoid raw fruit and vegetables and should keep food bland. It was also important for women to not climb stairs, have sex, or cry. More strict households would also say that a woman should remain in bed for the first two weeks after birth. Others might not allow a woman to watch TV, read the news, or have access to her phone, as these can all give a woman access to outside problems that might cause her to become overly emotional. Despite the dangers of it, labor was something that wasn't really feared. Well, women might have had some fears around it, but tradition told them not to. 
After all, most of the ancient world believed that a woman's job in life was to bring life into the world, ancient China included. Which of these traditions did you find the strangest? Let us know in the comments below, and then don't forget to like and subscribe for more crazy history.